This is our fourth session on Galatians 6, 14 to 18, and we're going to focus on verse 16. But let's read it in context. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision is anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy also upon the Israel of God. So, Father, as we begin to focus on Paul's closing benediction here with the wish of peace and the wish of mercy and then the wish of grace, praying these things down on his readers, I pray that we would experience this peace, that we would know this mercy and this grace, and that, oh God, we might walk by this rule and so come under the enjoyment of this peace. Help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the beginning of Paul's closing, you might say, benediction. I think the, the piece here is something he is praying down, so to speak, upon them. So let's ask, who, who are these people? His answer is, they are all of those who walk by this rule. So we need to know what this rule refers to. And he has just said, for neither circumcision is anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Peace be upon all who walk by this rule. Now, let's rehearse what the rule is, because he's willing to sum up the walk of the Christian for the whole letter by this rule. If you walk by this rule, you'll walk under the peace of God. If you walk by this rule, you will enjoy the ongoing mercy of God. What is this rule? And the closest parallel to this structure right here, neither circumcision is anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation, is right here in Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only, and then instead of saying a new creation, he says faith, the kind of faith that works through love. So the key statement about what the new creation is or what the rule is, is faith. Faith for what? And he has two answers to that in this letter. But before I look at the two things that faith is for, let me underline again from 220 that we're on the right track by saying the new creation is faith. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. So there's the end of the old Paul. But Christ who lives in me and the life I now live, there's the new Paul. That's the new creation. And what characterizes the new creation? The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. So the new creation is bringing into being a new being whose mark is faith. Okay, so we've seen it in Galatians 5, 6. We've seen in Galatians 2.20, and now the two treasures, shall we call them, true, the two outcomes of this faith, one is justification. We know that a person is not justified by works of the law, not, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith and not 
by works of, of the law. So two things are being said here. Justification, that is being declared right with God, comes through faith. And the negative, not works, which is really crucial here because the rule here is not only, evidently, the new creation walk by this rule, the rule of faith. It's also neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, the negative. And that's exactly what we have here in regard to justification. We know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith. So just as he says here, not circumcision, but a new creation, in the same way he says, not by law, but by faith. Now, what's the other thing that we have faith for? So the first one is justification. 216. And this one is the Spirit empowered life. Galatians 3 5. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law? No. But by hearing with faith, yes. So just like we saw in 216, not works, but faith. Similarly, we see here not law, but faith, which corresponds to not circumcision, but the new creation. So this rule here, whether it is understood as spirit-empowered life, 3-5, or justification, both essential, is from faith, not works, not circumcision. So the negative is part of the rule, and the positive is part of the rule. So the rule here by which we are to walk, if we are to enjoy peace and enjoy mercy under God, the rule is renounce reliance upon works of the law and embrace Christ by faith. Embrace justification by faith. Embrace the Spirit-empowered life by faith. This is the legal new standing that we have by faith. This is the transformative change of our very hearts by faith, and both are absolutely essential in this letter. We begin by getting right with God legally, by trusting Christ for justification, and we live by trusting Christ and his promises for the supply of the Holy Spirit to bear the fruits of the Spirit. And it is not surprising when you think of, of justification and the Spirit-empowered life, that the wish or the prayer would be for peace, is it? Because in, uh, where is it? Romans 5.1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Peace flows from justified by faith. Similarly, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So if the Spirit comes to us by faith, peace follows. If justification comes to us by faith, peace follows. It's not surprising then that he would say, all who walk by this rule will enjoy peace. I call down peace upon you. Peace because of justification. Peace because of the Spirit-empowered life, which leaves one last question for verse 16. Is this mercy 
called down, prayed down upon a separate group of people called the Israel of God, or is the Israel of God simply renaming all of us? Is he speaking of all Christians who walk by this rule as the Israel of God, or is he adding to a blessing upon Christians, a blessing upon Israel in the hope that they will be Christians? It could be that. There would be absolutely nothing theologically false about that or harmful about that. And many argue that this and also strongly points to the fact that this is a distinct and separate group of people. And frankly, I don't want to be dogmatic here, but I will simply say the content of the letter would make that a little odd, an odd way to end this letter, it seems to me. And what I mean by that is is two verses. Galatians 3, 7. Know then, it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham, and this is Gentiles and Jews. Everyone who has faith is a son of Abraham, is a true Israelite, you could say. Or it's even more explicit in in Galatians 3 that Jews and Gentiles are one. In Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. So he, he's trying not to separate out Jews and Greeks, at least not in Christ. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female, for you are all one. In Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you're Abraham's offspring. So he's arguing in this letter that Gentiles and Jews are both Abraham's offspring and therefore heirs according to the promise. Therefore, when you get to the end and you hear him say, Peace be upon them, those who walk according to this rule of faith. And mercy also upon, I would lean towards saying that this is simply underlining what he said in 3 7 and 3 uh, 28 that Jew and Gentile make up the new true Israel of God. So he's beginning his benediction, calling down peace, calling down mercy, and and we'll see him call down grace. All of it upon those who walk according to the rule of the new creation, which is faith, not reliance upon works of the law.